Welcome back to the fish room. Today's video is going to be a pretty fun one because we're escaping a tank right there, a nano tank, and it's gonna be pretty interesting. But just take a look at how this fish room is slowly coming together. We've got the nano rack right here, the 60 centimeter aquascape tank, which is just temporarily holding some plants right now. That came from the mini studio that was in the house. And I've still got one more tank, the four foot tank, to be moved out over here and that will happen soon but the four foot tank will need to get all the plants out all the fish out and all the all the soil everything needs to come out and that tank if you guys don't know ranked 59 in the iaplc contest and we're going to be doing another aquascape right there and submit it for the next year's contest and i really want to try to beat 59 so that's that's the number to beat next year and i'm super excited to get the tank right in this spot. You can kind of see the yellow tape there. That's where the tank is gonna sit, from there to somewhere over there. Today, we're going to be escaping this one foot cube tank, or 30 centimeters cube, whichever way you go by. So the hardscape is already in there. This is basically the shape, uh, how it's gonna look. But we're of course gonna have some little rocks in there and sand and soil and stuff like that. And it's gonna look totally different once we get all the plants in there. But the first thing I'm going to do is we're gonna get a nice background on this tank. So let's do that. Take a look at how good that looks with a white colored background. From now on, with all my aquascaping tanks, I'm going to go with white colored backgrounds because it just looks so much better, so much brighter as well, and it also creates a sense of depth. So if you go with a white background, it tells your eyes that there's, there's more space behind and it makes the tank feel deeper than it really is. Whereas if you go with a black colored background like what you see here, it kind of tells you that there's a wall there and you can't go further back. So with regular tanks like this, Black backgrounds are good enough. It's also less cleaning. You don't have to scrub the algae down all the time. But with white backgrounds, it, it just looks so good, especially with plants in it. Also, if you look at many of the tanks that professional aquascapers are scaping nowadays or contest aquascapers, they use mostly white colored backgrounds or bright colored backgrounds or even the gradation type, the blue with the white, uh, kind of make it look like the sky. Those are beautiful. And I actually have one right here sent to me by Town Bright Aquatics. This one you can't really see right now, but I also used it for my four foot contest aquascape tank and that those type of backgrounds look really nice. The light I'm using on this tank is just this uh, ADA Aquasky light that I had sitting around. I just took one of it off and just temporarily placed it up here and I'll find a better solution for it. But until then, it's just gonna sit up here and I think it'll work perfectly fine. I think now we can finally get to escaping this tank. So. I'm gonna start, maybe put some soil in, put some rocks. I have no idea where to begin, but let's start. I put the rocks in place. Uh, this is kind of how it's gonna look like. It's not final yet, but I've put moss on one of them. I want some moss uh, growing on these rocks, so I'll probably put a little bit more moss on these over here. And then what, what I'm gonna do next is probably glue the wood to the rock so that they don't move around because right now you can see it's not stable and when I do maintenance on this tank I want to make sure that it's stable and not going to shift around so I'll probably glue that in place right now. Okay, so I've glued everything together. It's all one piece right now. This thing is not gonna go anywhere. It, it'll shake a little bit, but it's not gonna move. And that's gonna make maintenance a whole lot easier. And better is that the wood isn't touching the glass. So I'll have space to get my hands in there, get a scraper down there to wipe off all the algae. And that is, that's, that's looking really nice. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to put some small sized lava rocks behind these rocks where you see these holes are and I'm gonna try to cover these holes up because I don't want soil coming out in front because we're gonna have sand in the front so we're gonna grab these lava rocks and just kind of backfill it kind of like that so you can cover most of the larger holes next up I'm going to add a layer 
of pumice. I already pre-rinsed this, so all I have to do is just scoop it up and pour it in the back where I'm gonna put the soil. So I've got the pumice laid down. You can see it kind of slopes up towards the back because we want the soil to be higher in the back and kind of lower as it comes down to the front. Uh, so now we're gonna add soil and I'm just going to use some of my leftover Amazonia soil. It's super nutrient rich and the plants should really like it. Take a look at how good this tank is looking right now. We've got the sand laid out in the foreground. I've put moss on the driftwood just to give it a more natural look to it. And I think I can say I'm halfway done. All we've got to do now is plant the plants in the soil. And it's, it's going to be a very simple uh, choice of plant for this tank. And then we just fill it up and we're done. So I'm going to just be using two types of stem plants in this tank and they're both green colors. So I was planning to have a red colored plant in that tank, but I decided not to. I just want a green, full on green look like a classic nature aquarium. And the plants we're gonna use are this, Rotalan and Gentian. It's a thin leaved uh, green plant as well as Rotala rotundifolia green, which is one of the most common uh, stem plants. So let's get these planted. These are just trimmings from my four foot aquascape tank. We'll get them planted and we've also got some epiphyte plants to put in this tank. So let's go. All right, we are so close to getting this thing done. We just need a couple more plants to add in this tank. The first plant we need is a Microsorum trident or the trident java fern. I've got a few of that and we'll be adding one of that right in the center here. I think it'll be a nice centerpiece plant. And then we're gonna need a few cryptocorins and the crypts are gonna go in here. They're kind of like the mid ground plant but unfortunately I don't have any of that right now so just wait a few moments. I'll come back with the plants. It'll be a few days for me but for you guys it'll be just one second. And take a look at that. We're back a few days later and the tank is all complete. I've even got some fish in there. Take a look at this. These are the ember tetras. I've got a couple of them in here and they seem to be doing amazing. But you can see right there in the center, we've got the Microsorum trident, the trident fern, and it's looking amazing. I put quite a large piece in there. This was from my other tank. I think because it's such a large piece, it makes the tank look even better. And then I've also put some Anubias Nana Petite as well as the Cryptocorins that I mentioned earlier on both corners. We've got some back in this corner as well, but it's a little bit hard to see. But I'm sure that once the crypts start growing, this tank will look even better. We'll have some browns in this area and I think it'll just make this tank stand out. I've also put some floating plants in here. We've got some frog bit as well as some of this house plant. It's called Peperomia. I'm not sure how well it'll do, but for the last few days it's been doing all right, so that's a good sign. You might also notice that I've added my DIY CO2 onto this tank and this will just help the plants grow even better, even more lush uh, than without CO2. So I'll make a video, I promise, on how I set this up in the future. It's a very simple DIY CO2 system and it'll last at least a month. If you go for an even larger CO2 bottle, you can actually have it last more than a month. For my case, I find that this size is just perfect. It looks good and it fits the tank perfectly. It's not too obtrusive or whatever, so I, I kind of like that. As always, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, be sure to hit that thumbs up and then subscribe for more videos like this because we've got this entire fish room coming along. It's still not even close to completion, but I'm making videos one at a time and updates on everything that's going on. So be sure to subscribe and I'll see you guys next time.